As Christmas gets closer and closer, there might already be some presents wrapped and placed under the tree at your house. And of course, part of the fun is watching the suspense build as we wait and we wonder what it is that's underneath that wrapping paper. Of course, most of the time that suspense comes to an end when we finally get to unwrap the gift and see what's inside. But maybe every now and then we unwrap a gift, look at the picture there on the box and, and still wonder to ourselves, what exactly is this and what exactly does this do? Believe it or not, it's possible to have the same questions about the gift that God gives us at Christmas, the gift of his son, Jesus. Even if we know who Jesus is, that he's God's son, that he's the promised Messiah, we still might wonder, well, what exactly is he here for? What exactly is he here to do? And so thankfully, when God sent John the Baptist to get people ready for Jesus, he made sure that John answered that question too. This week, we've been talking about John the Baptist and the important work that he did to get people ready for Jesus. He told them that the way to be ready for Jesus was to repent. As he baptized Jesus, God made it very clear that Jesus was his son and the promised Messiah. But what exactly was he there to do? Well, a short time after Jesus had been baptized by John, Jesus was walking toward John. John had a, a bunch of people gathered around him listening to him preach, as was often the case. And as Jesus approached, John pointed at Jesus and said, Look, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Seems like kind of an odd thing to say, right? There's a human being walking toward you and you say, Look, a lamb. Even though John's words might be confusing to us, the people who originally heard them would have known exactly what John meant. You see, in the Old Testament, lambs were often used as animals of sacrifice. Maybe the most familiar and most famous animal, the, the most famous lamb that was sacrificed was the Passover lamb. Every year at the Passover, the people were to select one lamb from their flock, a lamb without any spot or blemish or defect. They were to slaughter that lamb, take its blood, spread it on the door frames of their houses, and then eat that lamb as part of the Passover meal. In other words, even though the lamb had nothing wrong with it, it had no sin or guilt of its own, the lamb became the victim. The lamb was put to death. And of course, all of this pointed ahead to the coming Messiah. Even though Jesus had no sin and no guilt of his own, the world's sin was placed on him. And so as a result, he became the victim. He was put to death and his blood was shed on the cross. So how does God get us ready for Jesus' arrival? Yes, he tells us exactly who Jesus is. He's God's son. He's the promised Messiah. But he also tells us exactly what Jesus came to do. And that's very important because it's so very easy for us to really use Jesus for something else. We might think to ourselves that Jesus is the guy who sets the good example or inspires us to live the way that God wants us to live. Maybe Jesus is the guy who helps us cope with all of our problems or get through the day-to-day -day struggles of our lives. Maybe Jesus is the guy who serves as the spokesperson or even the mascot for whatever political or social causes happen to be passionate to us. Can we use Jesus for all of those things? I suppose. But it would sort of be like getting a brand new iPhone for Christmas and and as soon as you unwrap it and take it out of the box, you say, this is perfect. I've got this wobbly end table and I've just been looking for the perfect thing to put under one of the legs to stabilize it and make it stay put. Could an iPhone serve that purpose? Could an iPhone do that? I, I suppose. But is it safe to say that you'd be missing out on what the iPhone is really for? Yeah, of course. So as we get ready to receive the gift that God gives us at Christmas, let's remember John's words. What is that gift? Well, look, it's a lamb. And what is it for? It takes away the sin of the world. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your willingness to sacrifice your innocent son for a world of guilty sinners. Keep our eyes focused on the Lamb of God rather than carrying the burdens we feel ourselves. Help us place them all on him. In his name we pray, amen. Hey everyone, Pastor Mike here from Time of Grace. Thank you so much for investing your limited time to grow in your faith with us. But could I ask you for one more favor? 
I'm sure you're itching to check out social media or go on to the next part of your day, but you could do a huge help for the kingdom of God if you would rate and review this podcast. Just taking a few seconds of your time will help other people to find time of grace, which matters so much to us because we want people to hear about grace, to hear about Jesus, to hear about eternal life. So thanks for taking a little more time. We pray that God blesses you with a great day and we'll see you soon.